You don't always need a removal key to take out the core of desk type locks. Now, of course, there are many different ones available. And of course, we do like to sell things. But what is more important than selling a core key is making sure you have the knowledge to not need one if you choose to do so. Because let's face it, when it comes to doing lock work in the real world, you're gonna encounter all sorts of different keyways, all sorts of different locks, and all sorts of different customer requests. And if you know how these types of locks work, well, not only are you gonna get the job done, but you're gonna make your customer happy. So let's dive right into it. Now, before we get going, let's just take a moment and talk about why having this skill is really important. Now, let's say you're at a at an office, you're doing a rekey, and the customer says, hey, while you're here, you know, we have this um, desk and we really want the lock on it to fit our other keys. Or maybe a customer's like, hey, we have all of these, um, these desks, they all use the same key, and we need this one in particular to use a different key. Now, depending on if you have the core key and or an extra lock on your van, whatever it might be, you could go that way. But having this skill and understanding how these locks work will really serve you well, not only for max profitability, but for also making the customer's life even easier. All right, so here is a plunger lock, right? Now let's just go over um, it real quick. How does it work, right? You push it in, it locks, you put the key in, you turn it and it pops out, right? And you see this in the back here, there's the locking mechanism right there. Now, a lot of times when you encounter locks like this, um, when you start looking around and start playing with it, you're like, man, I don't see any really way to get them out, all right? And so that's gonna be your first indication. Your second is gonna be when you just look at the plug here and it's a wafer lock, okay? Um, it's, it's almost a dead giveaway for me, at least when you look at locks like this, you're like, okay, I know how this is going to come apart. The question is, is how do I do it? All right, and that's what we're really gonna be going over here. So is what I did is I went ahead and I, I took one apart for you. And um, is what you're gonna see here, and this is so common on these style locks, is, um, let me grab a key here and turn it. Is what's gonna happen is you're gonna see, right, the lock, the plug turns but there's this back, it's really, I mean, just a extra wafer almost um, is really what it is. There's a little specialty to it and I'll show you in a minute here, but that wafer is actually what is keeping this plug in. And so that's why you can put a key in and turn. Now, a question you might be like, well, PJ, can I just cut the shoulder back, push it in a little further and get that wafer to go down? Or is there a special depth I need to cut it to? And the answer is, is none of that is going to work. And uh, let me show you why here. So, is what we'll do here is, um, let me just push it down and let's we'll pull it out here, all right? Now, is what, is what we're gonna do here, take this off and you, if you can look down and I'll pull up a nice exploded picture for you. And is what happens is there's, a, there's actually a little cutout on the wafer that when you put the key in, the key just, um, the cutout just makes you bypass that wafer. And that's why when you compare a control key to your normal key, you're gonna see that the uh, groove is different because it's actually pulling up that wafer to work. All right. Now, of course, this is more tr this is more true than untrue, but um, that's essentially how they all work. And so you could try taking the shoulder back. You could try finding a longer key, but what you're going to find is when you put it in, it's not going to affect that back wafer. So let me get this put back together here. All right. So I went ahead and I got the uh, plug back in here. All right, so now let's do it on a real one that's not assembled and you can't see what's going on. So we're gonna do the same thing here as I'm gonna take the existing key, right? Here you go. And I'm just gonna stick it in like that. And then I'm going to take the key extractor. I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, here we go, right here, put it in. Okay, so I'll try to do this upside down. So you're gonna get it in there all the way. You can feel it because it's kind of bouncy. And then I'm just gonna hold 
the extractor and the key, I'm just gonna pull it out like that. And then to put it back in, you just do the same exact thing like that, and then pull the key out, and then the extractor will come out. So once again, put the existing key in, okay? Right on the groove right here, just stick this all the way in. You'll feel it go past all of the pins. It'll feel springy. Push down, hold on to the key and the extractor, and it's gonna come right out just like that. And you do the exact same thing to put it back together. And then when you're done, sometimes this extractor will get stuck. Just pull the key and then the extractor comes out. All right, so now the question is, is how do we actually take these apart without buying a control key? And the reason why you need to really know this is because you're gonna encounter all sorts of different types of these. And um, to try to get all of the control keys and even just go through all the expenses is really not worth it. Um, and let me show you the easiest way to do this. So if you stick in the existing key, okay? So if we stick the existing key in, right, the one that works it, and then is what we're going to do is I'm gonna be using this um, right hand key extractor. Uh, the part number, I'll put a link in the notes below. That's what it is right there. That's the part number. And essentially, this is what you're gonna do. And um, most of these are very similar. Um, and so you can use it on a lot of ones. But is what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna stick this in the groove. Okay, see the groove right here um, on the key? I'm just gonna stick it all the way in there. And just by going to the very back, Okay, you see that? Just by just sticking it in all the way, it actually, oops, I'll move the key here, it's gonna be both of them. By sticking it in there, it kind of like perfectly aligns it. And as you can see here, I can kind of move it uh, that way for up and down right there. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna hold those two together. We're just gonna pull that plug out. Now that you're there, you can go ahead, you can uh, rekey it to a different key the customer wants, um, whatever um, you need to do. And then you can put it back in the exact way here, there we go. Okay, and sometimes they'll, they get a little stuck when you put them back in. All you have to do is just take the key out and then it'll loosen that up to get that out as well. So that's how you can easily um, start working on these desk type locks without having one of those removal keys. Now, of course, once you start to understand this, there's obviously a lot more to it that you can use to your advantage. But since this is a public video, I'm just gonna stop there. But I would really love to know in the comments below. Now, do you do this a lot? Like, do you prefer to use this as your method or do you like to use the control keys? Let me know in the comments below and make sure that you include the hashtag LockBoss to automatically get entered in to win one of five free prizes we give away each week here on YouTube. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.